CSS media queries aren't that hard to do and they help when you're trying to do things like responsive design. I'm going to give you an introduction into how to use CSS media queries as well as how to get started using different breakpoints and viewports and what they are. Here's the responsive design we'll be working on today. The techniques that I'll go over as well as the implementation are the same that I use for real world businesses for hundreds of sites I've already built. Let's create our very first media query. To start us off, I've got a basic HTML page here with some CSS. It's got a logo with a navigation, hero image, feature items, and some columns. To create our very first media query, we'll run at media, and we'll put in a media type. In this case, we'll put in screen. We'll change the background style to white. This will immediately apply because we are running on a screen we could change this media type to say print. If we do this, then the media type won't apply right now. But if we were to select file and print, then we would see that the background is white. This is very useful if you want to apply different styling for people who want to do a print screen. But in this case, we'll just use screen. If we want to create a second property requirement to apply this media call, we simply call and and put in a second property. In this case, we might want something like min width. When we put this in and say select 480 pixels, we'll see that the styling immediately applies. This essentially is checking if the screen is larger than 480 pixels and applies the styling that we've set. In this case, we might change this to max. If we change this to max, the styling will only apply if the width of the page is smaller than 480 pixels. In this case, it's about 900 pixels. So this will only take effect if we put something in like 1200 pixels. Now we can see that the styling has applied. Another thing we can do is put in another and variable. In this case, we could put in min width of maybe 768 pixels. When we do this, the styling will only apply if the screen is both smaller than 1200 pixels, but larger than 768 pixels. So if we resize this to be a bit bigger, we can see it loses styling. But if we resize it to be smaller and smaller and smaller, again, it'll lose the styling when it gets smaller than 768 pixels. It's a useful way if you want a select range for your responsive design. Now, if you're still with me, my name's Adrian, and if you like this kind of content and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe, and let's just jump back into it. Now that we understand how media queries work, let's take a look at viewports. There are essentially a given range of attributes at which you'd expect a styling to appear. You would have things like the tablet size, the desktop size, the mobile size, and you would set a expected pixel range for those. In this case, a desktop would normally be something like 1,200 pixels. A laptop might be something smaller, like 1,024 pixels. A tablet might be even smaller, maybe something like 76 pixels. And a phone would be very small, something maybe like 480 pixels. That way, you can have consistent styling breakpoints, which are essentially when the styling changes at any expected pixel range. You've probably also seen them in Bootstrap. They would look something more like this with an XL, maybe an LG, a MD, and an SM. That way people normally define rows as column with a row of XL or LG, and these are the breakpoints at which they apply. In this case, we're just gonna use the variable names. So in this case, we could replace this max width of 1,200 pixels, and this min width of 768 pixels in here with the variable names. By using consistent variable names, we can make sure that our styling throughout our CSS always applies exactly the same, and we have consistent points at which the design of the website changes. So now that we understand the fundamentals of media queries, let's have a look at resizing this and making it a little bit smaller, more like a tablet size. When we do this, we see a few items break, such as a navigation and some of this text, which now seems to go over to another line. We can browse here to our CSS and create a media query to fix this. This will essentially make sure that the design is a little bit more responsive for this viewport. 
what we can do here is we can do a max width of maybe laptop size. When we do this, we can make those navigation items align horizontally instead of vertically. So we'll do display block and this should apply and make them go down, which it has. They're also a little bit too big, so maybe we'll decrease the font size to 25 pixels. And we can see that's taken effect. That way we can make sure now that they all look consistent with the design. Now, another thing we can do is make the screen a little bit smaller. And if we do that, we can see that the fonts might be a little bit too big now. So what we could do is create another media query here for a tablet size. And for this size, we could make the font size even smaller. So that way, as you're browsing between the different sizes, you can see that the font sizes are reducing and when they keep getting bigger, they eventually go to a vertical design once again. The next thing we can do is have a look at some of the other things that broke when we created this design. We can see here that the hero image and the feature items also don't seem to work very well. This image is now too big and the text is also too big to fit into this container. Let's see what we can do to fix up all these other elements to make sure they're consistent with this viewport size. I'm going to jump in here and update the body to start off with. I'm going to add a new media query and kick this one off for the laptop size. Max width laptop. Here, I'll remove some of this margin and padding that I'm adding to the entire design, just so it's got a little bit more room on the width and height. Let's create another one here for the tablet size. And here, maybe we'll make the margin to zero pixels. Great. Next, let's jump in here and have a look at the navigation, which seems fine. Next, let's have a look at the section here. If we open this up and have a look at the margin bottom, now if we have a look, we can see the margins on these are a little bit too large. So let's create a max width here of laptop size and just remove them altogether because the sections already have some margins and I think there's too much at this viewport. Next, let's jump into the main article here for the hero image and let's see if we can redesign it a little bit. For designs on tablets, you actually want them to be a little bit bigger and maybe the font size to be a bit smaller. So we'll do this here. Let's do a at media max width laptop. And what we'll do is for the image, let's make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll make the height 150 pixels and a height of 225 pixels. And finally, let's also make the font size a little bit smaller. It was 75 before, but this time we'll do 50 pixels. That way, everything looks much better now for this tablet design. So here for the section for the main feature items, which are under article, we can see that they've got a lot of padding and the sizing isn't quite right. So let's fix that up. We'll do our media max with laptop again. And in here, what we'll want to do is make the font size a little bit smaller. So maybe font size 30 pixels. We'll also make it, or maybe 25 pixels. We'll also make sure that the text now is centered. And we might even have a look at reducing the height of these a little bit to maybe something like 90 pixels and also removing the margins and maybe making them only 10 pixels. That way, all that seems to be more consistent with the design we had previously. Finally, let's have a look at these divs, which are meant to be our columns. If we take a look at them, they also have way too much margins and the font sizes are a little bit too large. Let's do media max width laptop and let's make the font size 20 pixels. We can have the margins at 10 pixels. And I think that's even enough to keep them where they should be. The only other thing I can think of is maybe reducing the padding and maybe making it 10 pixels as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now if we have a look at this design, it's meeting this viewport very well. Here's an even smaller viewport. This is more like a tablet or even a mobile phone. But now we can see that everything feels a little bit more squashed in. 
and it's almost better for every single item now to have its own column for it to exist. And in this case, if we want to do that, we simply apply a max width and we'll apply a tablet size. We'll change the flex direction of this section so that each one of the items is actually arranged as a column. This way, it's got a lot more space to breathe and looks a lot better on this viewport. We might also want to make sure that the feature items stand out a little bit more. So we can copy this viewport down here and make sure that the articles actually have a min height, which is a little bit larger, something say like 100 pixels. If we do this and apply the styling, we can now have a nice big hero image with a few good feature items and a number of extra bits of information that were originally columns. Our responsive design is now ready. It works on all viewports, so if I was to resize it, we would immediately see how those viewports take effect as we change sizes. And I think it's great to see that responsive design has a lot of fundamentals that you can apply to make sure that the design stays consistent, doesn't matter what kind of device you're on. This is just an introduction to responsive design, and I'm going to do a couple more videos in the next few days about what else you can do with it, because there's a number of different ways we can apply different styling and resizes, even without media queries. So if you'd like to see those videos, stay tuned, and if you did like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what kind of stuff you want to see. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more like it, please subscribe. Thank you.